What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to take a look at a fight that took place April 1st, 1955 at the Boston Garden. It took place between Johnny Saxton, Newark, New Jersey, and Boston Bomber, Tony DeMarco. Now, I want to go through that fight, but I want to go through it with you right here on the Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Now, Johnny Saxon was an outstanding fighter. He was born July 4th, 1930 in Newark, New Jersey. He died October 4th, 2008. He was 78 years of age at the time of his death in Newark, New Jersey. I had a pleasure of meeting him. Nice man. Had great conversations with him. He stood 5 foot 9 inches and he had a 71 inch reach. He was a welterweight. They had total bouts of 66, 55 wins, 21 knockouts, 9 losses. And he was knocked out himself 5 separate occasions. He had 2 draws. He was in there with world-class champions such as Kid Gavilan, Tony DeMarco, Carmen Basilio, Joey Giardello, Wallace Bud Smith, and Virgil Aikens. These are all world-class champions. Now, the issue Kid Gavilan, who was the world champion at that time, had was Johnny Saxton. He didn't want to face him in Philadelphia. Kid Gavilan became the welterweight champion. When Sugar Ray Robinson gave up his title because he wanted to move up and wait to face the raging bull, Jake LaMotta. He had faced Jake LaMotta five uh, times before then, and it was going to be the sixth time, but this time it was going to be for Jake LaMotta's uh, middleweight championship. This was in 1951. But in the meanwhile, Kid Gavilan had, had won the welterweight championship in a tournament, and he would have to defend his title against Johnny Saxton. And he didn't want to go to Philadelphia to face Johnny Saxton because it was a crime family that Frankie Blinky Palomo was a part of. And he was afraid, through the mob ties, he would get robbed. And it turns out that's exactly what happened. He would lose his championship to Johnny Saxton in Philadelphia. Now, Tony DeMarco, that's who we're talking about today, knocked out Johnny Saxton at the Boston Garden Arena. Now, Carmen Basilio would also face Johnny Saxton three separate occasions. And he himself had a problem with the mystique of the mob ties that surrounded Johnny Saxton. And he would lose to Johnny Saxton, but he would come back and he would knock out Johnny Saxton in a brutal fashion. Then we'd fight him again just to make sure everybody understood who the world champion was. Johnny Saxton would face Wallace Bud Smith. Wallace Bud Smith would take the title away from Jimmy Carter, lightweight championship. Jimmy Carter would take the lightweight championship away from Mike Williams in 1951. He would knock him out in eight rounds. So Wallace Bud Smith was the goods. And Johnny Saxon would also face Virgil Aikens. Now, Virgil Aikens would become welterweight champion of the world June 6, 1958, when Carmen Basilio would move up in weight class to face Sugar Ray Robinson for the middleweight division. So it left room for six men to have a tournament. And Virgil Aikens would defeat Vince Martinez June 6, 1958, become the welterweight champion of the world. And Don Jordan would defeat Benny Kipperet. He would do his part. And then he would wind up meeting with Virgil Aikens, 1958. And he would defeat Virgil Aikens. And he himself would become the world Welterweight champion from 1958 to 1960. Quite a story. But Johnny Saxon would have his professional debut May 9, 1949 against Jimmy Swan. Jimmy Swan at that time had a fighting career record of 10, 8, and 2. He would fight him in Philadelphia. He would win a unanimous 10-round decision February 10, 1950 against Charlie Salas. Charlie Salas had a ring record career at that time of 76, 23, and 11. Fought him in Madison Square Garden. Now, the thing with Charlie Salis had a problem with him because he knocked out Ike Williams, and I didn't like that. Ike Williams, I had a true great deal of respect for. I didn't like Ike Williams when he knocked out Bo Jack, one of my favorite lightweights, in six rounds in 1948. I didn't appreciate that at all, but at the same time, I didn't like the fact that Charlie Salis defeated and knocked out Ike Williams. So it was redemption for me to know that Charlie Salis lost to Johnny Saxton. April 21st, 1950, he would defeat Joe Maselli, very good fighter. Joe Maselli had a ring career at that time of 26-6-2, fought him at the St. Nicholas Arena. 
September 22, 1950, he would also defeat Tony Pallone. Now, Tony Pallone was a numbers runner, and he also worked for the mob. He would collect money that was debt owed for the mob. He was a short fighter, had plenty of heart, didn't care. You would have to kill him in the ring. But he was a very, very good fighter, had a very good fight record. Did Tony Pallone. I'm going to show you Tony Pallone after this video. He had a fight record of 47, 16, and 6 before the Madison Square Garden. He would defeat Lester Felton, March 14th, 1952. Lester Felton had a ring career at 48, 7, and 3. Fought him at Madison Square Garden. June 4th, 1952, he'd fight Luther Rawlings, another good fighter. He would defeat him. Luther Rawlings would have a ring career, a uh, fight uh, career at 38 with 3. So he had 30 wins, 8 losses with 3 draws for him in Chicago Stadium. July 30th, 1952, would fight eight, Virgil Akins. Virgil Akins at the time had a fighting career record of 23-8-0 for him in Chicago Stadium. October 3rd, 1952, would fight Ralph Tiger Jones. Ralph Tiger Jones had a ring career record of 22-4-2 for him in St. Nicholas Arena. Uh, St. Nicholas Arena. Now the thing with Ralph Tiger Jones, when Shuey Robinson was trying to make a comeback, he had retired in 1952 because he was in there with Joey Maxim. Couldn't complete the 14th round at the Polo Grounds. Potassium ran out of his body. And he would lose. Couldn't answer the bell. And he would go into retirement, into show business, doing tap dancing. He would make a return to the ring. And he would have to face Ralph Tiger Jones. Ralph Tiger Jones would defeat Ray Robinson. Ray Robinson had been out of the ring for two years. But it was a very good mark on Ralph Tiger Jones' record. And Johnny Saxon would defeat Ralph Tiger Jones, October 3rd, 1952. Johnny Saxon would also be in there with great fighters such as Del Flanagan. Del Flanagan had a brother by the name of Glenn Flanagan. Saxon would also defeat Charlie Williams and Gil Turner. Gil Turner was one of my best Philadelphia fighters. He was a welterweight and middleweight. He had an outstanding fight with Kid Gavilan, an outstanding fight with Joey Giardello. Did Gil Turner. Saxon would also be in there with Danny Bang Bang Whopper, another good fighter. He would be in there with Rio Trigo. I'm sorry, Mario Trigo. Mario Trigo was another good Mexican fighter. Fought a lot at the Olympic Auditorium in California. He would be in there with Raymond Fuentes and Denny Moya. So Johnny Saxon had his fair share of great fighters that he was fighting. Tony DeMarco, real name... Leo Lira. He was born January 14, 1933, in Boston, Massachusetts. He stood five foot five inches. He was a welterweight, had total fights of 71, 58 wins, 33 knockouts, 12 losses, and seven draws. He fought from 1948 to 1962. And he was in there with world class champions such as Patty DeMarco. Now, Patty DeMarco would become a lightweight champion when he defeated Jimmy Carter. Then he would lose that belt right back to Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter was the only three time lightweight champion. He would fight Tony DeMarco, uh, Patty DeMarco. So you had the DeMarco fighting the DeMarco. Incredible. He was in there with Don Jordan. He defeated Don Jordan. Virgil Akins defeated him twice. He was in there with Kid Gavilon. Now the thing with Kid Gavilon. Kid Gavilon was a fascinating fighter. He was a fascinating fighter. One of the greatest welterweight champions of all time. He was the second man to invent the bolo punch. But his bolo punch was a double bolo punch. It was a, a beautiful bolo punch to the body and repeatedly come right back up to the head. Stefano Garcia originally invented the bolo punch. But Kid Gavilan took it to another level. Now when he fought Virgil Akins, he would lose to him on two separate occasions. Couldn't beat Virgil Akins. He would fight Jimmy Carter. He would have a draw with Carter. He would fight Johnny Saxton. He would defeat him. And that's how he won the welterweight championship of the world. He would face Carmen Basilio, and he would be knocked out twice in the 12th round. He would fight him once at the War Memorial Auditorium in Syracuse, New York. And we would also fight him at the Boston Garden, where the Boston Celtics play. And the thing about that fight with Basilio... He'd be knocked out two seconds time difference from the first fight. Incredible. He'd be in there with Wallace Bud Smith. 
fascinating was Wallace Bud Smith. He was in there with everybody. So Tony DeMarco was an outstanding fighter himself. He began his professional debut October 21st, 1948 against Mentor Jones. He was in there with him again November 16th, 1948. Defeated him both times. August 3rd, 1953, he was in there with Young Terry. Young Terry at that time had a fighting career record of 70, 27, and 5. Now, the thing with Young Terry, he was from Trenton, New Jersey. He had plenty of sparring wars with Ike Williams. But he was a fascinating fighter himself. Tony DeMarco would also fight fighters such as Tony Red uh, Top Davis. Teddy Red Top Davis, he would defeat him. Wilbur Wilson, he defeated him twice. Wilbur Wilson was a very good fighter. He would face Chico V. Jar, defeat him. Carlos Chavez, defeat him. Arthur Besley, defeat him. Casper Ortiz. Now, he fought Casper Ortiz three separate occasions. He would win one and lose two. He would face Stefan Radel, defeat him. Very good fighter. Denny Moyer. He would lose to Denny Moyer. Denny Moyer would fight Robinson and everybody else. He would defeat Vince Martinez. Now, Vince Martinez is the fighter that Virgil Aikens had knocked out for brutal rounds for the World Welterweight Championship. He'd be in there with Chris Christensen, another good fighter. So Tony DeMarco was an outstanding fighter. And I just wanted to let you know how good these fighters were. On Friday, June 10th, 1955, was when he would face Carmen Basilio at the War Memorial Auditorium, Syracuse, New York. At that time, Carmen Basilio had a fighting career record of 44, 11, and 7. Now, in 1949, Carmen Basilio was about to hang up the gloves. He kept breaking his hands all the time. And he was losing fights that he should have won. But Angelo Dundee had took over his career and brought him back to this point. Now, the referee for that fight was Harry Kessler. He was a veteran referee. He was in there with Frank Forbes. Also, you had Burt Grant. These are all judges for that fight. And those judges didn't need to be there because it was a 12-round brutal knockout. November 30th, 1955, Wednesday night. You had Pass Blue Ribbon and you had Gillette Razor. Both those fights were on television. And those are the sponsors for those fights. But he would fight him at the Boston Garden. And at that time, Basilio had a fighting career record of 47, 11, and 7. It was the 13,373 fans that showed up for that fight. And the same exact thing, two seconds later, he'd be knocked out in the 12th round. Fascinating. Friday, April 1st, 1955, he would face Johnny Saxton at the Boston Garden. At that time, Johnny Saxton had a career record of 46-3-2. And, and he'd be knocked out. In brutal fashion. Fascinating story. But great fighters. Tony DeMarco. And Johnny Saxton. Entertain us. Like you won't believe. Because in that fight. Both men went at it. But the thing with Tony DeMarco. He was a pressure fighter. One of us are gone. One of us is not walking out of this ring. Somebody's going to be flatlined. And that was the attitude coming into that fight with Tony DeMarco. And at some point, Johnny Saxon was having his way with the jab. He was moving around. But he couldn't keep Tony DeMarco off of him. And the pressure got to him. Tony DeMarco didn't get that message because it was at the Boston Garden that Johnny Saxon had ties with the Philadelphia crime family. Didn't care one way or the other. And he would take him out and he would win the welterweight championship of the world. So salute to my subscribers. Salute to these great fighters, Johnny Saxton and Tony DeMarco, for giving us great thrills. You see, these fighters put their lives on the line for our entertainment. Yes, they get returns on their investment. But based on the strategies while they're in the game, determines how long their investments will last. So to support these fighters... Support this channel as I'm trying to give all these fighters as much recognition as I can. Because without these fighters, the fighters you watch today will not exist. 
those belts that they have today came from these fighters. And if you want to watch real fights, check out fighters like Johnny Saxton and Tony DeMarco. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistograph Series stating all great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Salute.